going to show you sort of the rank of how the governments uh, sort of really work. It's it's a it's a system where one would assume that um, the president of the United States holds sort of the highest rank um, because he's got the biggest military or whatever. But that's not quite so. There's ranks higher than him that he must um, uh, obey, so to speak. And if he doesn't obey those ranks, well, then he could destroy the whole, the whole system. But I'm going to try and explain. Um, we'll show you, give, give you a schematic or a diagram of just where these ranks or how this rank works, and where um, where you, as a man or as a Christian or as a pagan, sits in this rank. And um, but just before we do that, the English. Um, explanation of this word here it just simply says um a system in which members of an organization or society are ranked according to relative statutes or authority now there's two things happening in there relative statutes or authority and um each meridian or each uh trust has its own version of laws and statutes and authority but the trust itself may be answerable to trusts above it. And uh, that's the other thing where some um, government workers and some police officers and what have you, uh, even some lawyers, are not quite understanding this, the way this system really works. Uh, this is a quick rundown of just how the authority kind of works. And um, first of all, we have God. Uh, this God is the um, is the God of existence. He's, this God is the one that created all the things that we can see, the world, and and that God is the one that um, we don't really understand. We'll never really comprehend how this whole thing uh, exists or is made, and we don't really have any um, ability to question that either. Because even in trust law, as the hierarchy goes down. Um, this type of system, the, the lower ranking officers are subordinate to the higher ranking officers. So we'll, we'll just see this. Now, even in the Bible, it says never put God to the test because of the type of system that we, we're dealing with. It's a trust law system. The next thing is man. God, man. Now, you know, in um, Adam and Eve and in Genesis, God created man and breathed the life into man after he made him from the earth. And this is basically stating that man has a birthright to the subject matter. He's a part of this world because this God created the world and also created man in it. That is our true God. But I'm going to sort of show you how we've lost, <laughs> we're losing this God. So you've got to be careful. Um, the, the next thing that happened was in the Garden of Eden, God granted dominion, which is the highest of authority, to man. And what man did... Um, what, what happened in this, by granting the, um, the absolute authority, the legal title to man, that granted the equitable title with God. 
So man was holding the legal title to God. God was the, the director, and, and this is still evident because um, when this God decides to uh, have a volcano or, or create a, a, a massive earthquake or create a massive storm, there's not much that man can do about it. That's, that's the fury of God. This God, no matter what you do, hate him or love him, whatever happens, you can't question that and you can't do much about it either because his fury is of the greatest. Um, and sometimes those storms and that remind us of the respect that we have or that we should be having for this God up here. Uh, what happened is God granted the, the legal title to man. So that means man looks after this planet. He's, uh, he's duty bound to look after it. But what he has done or what's been offered to man is this thing here, which is called the Vatican. And what that means is the A-T I can. Vatican, which means that I can, which means holder I can. And that's the third rank down now. This is the beast of burden. And he's offered this up to man. And what he said is, you give me the legal title and I will give you the equitable title. And um, I will then serve all the debts, settle all the debts of the meridium of the Garden of Eden, which is the earth. So then he controls the, um, he looks out, he's the debtor, becomes the debtor of man. But man created this. God didn't create it, man did. So the God of the Vatican is man. That's Adam. That means man. Adam means man. Now, why would someone want to pay the debts of man? <laughs> and that's because this people here, it knows how to confer the debts of man back onto man. <laughs> now, the next um, hierarchy down is the debtor. So the Vatican creates a debtor for the Vatican. Man created the debtor to pay the debts of man. It's the Vatican. The Vatican creates a debtor. Babylon. Which means baby for long time. That's what Babylon is. Baby and long. Long. L-O-N. In, um, uh, in Latin, it's just child and long. L-O-N means for a long time. And that's probably what um, the surnames and the, and the infant surname, an infant, so that when you um, when you're born, you're birthed into this state of Babylon here, which is really also. or really or the Roman Empire or it's it's the, the debtor of, of Rome and what Babylon does then it needs to create a debtor this is the Vatican and this is really Rome Babylon is Babel you know the old Babylonian text and, and everything it's it's in the Bible it's Babylon's been um, recognized it's it exists and it exists today the United States um, the Pentagon that's Babylon <laughs> I'll even show you why with the Babylonian text is as well and what Babylon has done is it created a creditor and a debtor creditor and a debtor and this is what they talk about in the Garden of Eden, the tree of life. 
and the tree of knowledge. Tree of life, tree of knowledge, creditor, debtor. And these two things were accounts. So Babylon had to create to create a um, remedy inside this and to, to get man to pay his own debts is to, is to turn man into either the, the debtor of, the, of Babylon so that Babylon could be the debtor of the Vatican so then the Vatican could be the debtor of man so that man is the debtor of God. But what this thing here is trying to do is get rid of man because this is the serpent, the usurper, the usurps in. And if it can get rid of man, uh, then all of the debts that are paid to Babylon and then to the Vatican, if man isn't there, then he gets to keep the loot, keep the gold, keep all of the debts of man. Uh, Vatican, the very symbol, is also Vatican, Holder I can. And Holder is, is like a valley, which is the banks of a river. It is, it is the first the bank. That is the bank. There. <laughs> that's that's the, the, that is the, the director of the flow of current, the currency in relation to a charge when charges are, are forced against us. Now these the trick down here to create the, the creditor and the debtor these two accounts are called the Christian Christian and the pagan Christian and pagan account so how does it get you to make how does it get you to, to hold the pagan account, which really means the pay again account. Pagan, pay again. So why this is paying again is because man's already paid. It's already, his debts are paid by the Vatican. But the Vatican are going to get man to pay the debts again for the second time. <laughs> So now we have um, God, then man. Man created the Vatican, the first debtor. Uh, the Vatican created Babylon. And Babylon created two accounts, the Christian account and the pagan account. The creditor, the debtor. Life and knowledge. L and K. Kill. L-I-F-E. Life and kill. Now, there's two warnings. When God said to man, he said, whatever you do, you never eat from the tree of knowledge. Don't eat, otherwise you will surely die. That was the warning. Now, in the New Testament, Christ came along and he said that in my name only, my name, which is the name of an account, shall you be saved my name only so now we have these two accounts which is the creditor the debtor the tree of life the tree of knowledge life death death life we have they're called accounts so this account is the account of the creditor this is the account of the debtor now how do we get man to hold the accounts of the debtor? <laughs> and this is probably one of the biggest, um, the biggest tricks with where the, the uh, birth certificates and everything uh, come into being. Um, I'll now we'll we'll name the account and we'll just show you what's going on. This is the name. This is the yeah. 
name and surname. Have you noticed that's, that's on your birth certificate? And then when you look at your birth certificate, let's talk about John Paul Smith. <laughs> John Paul When you look at your birth certificate, you're going to see this and it will say name and surname. Now that's what you will assume, but there's no surname on that document, on the, on the certificate of birth. But there is a name, John Paul, as your Christian name or given name, and then it says surname and then that's where the Smith will be, the surname. That's made you sort of assume that that's your surname. And then when someone asks you, like a police officer or someone from the state, from the Babylonian state, which is the, um, at the moment, it is probably the United States Securities and Exchange Commission that owns all of the nations of the world as well as Canada and as well as Commonwealth of Australia and as well as the United States. Babylon, Babylon owns these things and that uh, to, in the modern day is, is more than likely the US Federal Reserve, which is that bank, and the, um, and the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. So if you go into Canada or Commonwealth of Australia or any of the corporations, uh, the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, um, Microsoft. If you if you look at these companies, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, McDonald's, they are all registered to the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. So they all stem from the one, the one world government, Babylon. Now, when you look at your name, John Paul Smith, if you're illiterate and you don't know what's going on and you haven't been taught how to read the signs at school, and just remember what what uh, Christ said. He said, in my name only shall you be saved. And then the other thing he stressed was, you must learn to read the sign. Because there's two things happening in this, English and sign, that is uh, called uh, a Babylonian, or it's actually called um, a Latin or ancient Latin symbolic text this is a descriptive text it's completely and utterly different but if you if you're an illiterate uh, illiterate pleb actually is what they'll call you this is what you will assume this name to be so when a police officer comes to you and says uh, what's your name and your date of birth You'll say, oh, sir, my name is John Paul Smith. <laughs> and yet, the name written on the birth certificate says John Paul. So straight away, someone's made an error. Someone's made a mistake. And if you're the one that's claiming John Paul Smith to be your full name, when John Paul is your full name on the birth certificate, then that police officer has been trained to, as soon as you give a full name, which includes your surname, which is in, incorporated with your real name, it's an incorporation, uh, and a presumption, he will, take, um, he will take authority over you straight away. And what it is under a form of water law salvage rights, because you're not John Paul, you claim to be John Paul Smith, and John Paul Smith, in law and in fact, and in reality, John Paul Smith does not exist. Only John Paul, in fact, exists. John Paul, in reality and in fact, John Paul Smith, in reality and in fact, does not exist. So that enters them into the world of fictions. So rather than you being a man, you will become down here a oops a human a human which is 
the colour of man. Now, when you look at the um, the dictionaries again, um, a human human is a is a monster. And then, when you go into monster, the word monster is a is a fiction. A monster is a fiction. John Paul Smith is a monster because he is a fiction. Also a human. And the other thing that which is very strange about this is the minute you incorporate any two items together, any two things together that are incorporated um, in relation to the Vatican or the water law, it, um, it becomes a person. And a person is a a corp oration, corp speaking, which means which means dead. So through your own ignorance, what you are stating here is that you are the surname who is dead. Now, no one forced you to do this. You did that. You claimed your name to be the incorporated name because John, Paul and Smith don't exist. Uh, they exist as two separate entities, but they don't exist as one name. So you're the one that did that. You're the one through your own ignorance and your own inability to assume that you are right. Yet Christ comes along and said, no, no, you've got to learn how to read the sign. He didn't tell you what the sign, he just said, you learn how to read the sign. Well, if you know how to read the sign, you'll know straight away that, oh, no, that's sign. That's not my name. That's no part of it. Sign is sin. Sign is sin. That's what it means. Um, even the, the, the words S is the snake, I is one, is U, I, and N. S, I, G, which is a governance. And N is uh, mountain and water, which is the um, which is the Babylonian. Um, uh, t t it, which it, it's not Babylonian. It's it's the two sides. It's the, the the name and the surname. It is the creditor and the debtor. N is M is the mountain, and water is the sea. This is the mountain, which is land. This is the sea. But the N, when written is the two, the two combined. So in the symbolism, when it looks to symbol, this is the snake, which is Satan. You've become dead through your own false presumption that um, you thought that your name, John Paul, with the all uppercase symbolic Smith, was one name. And the minute you incorporated and you assumed that, this is what you became. Human, a fiction, a person, a corporation, dead. And of course, a monster. And monsters have to be controlled under, um, under statute law. So you've been under the control of statute law which is not free will which is under what Satan wanted you're under the control of S Satan and Satan or um, did not give man the free right to make a choice God gave man the free right to make a choice to enter into 
the debtor or the creditor. But how you make that choice is by learning what Christ said, by, by studying the Bible and working out how the Adam and Eve trusts about in, in relation to 126 of Genesis where um, God granted dominion, God granted dominion to, to man over the land, the air, the sea, and the thing that creepeth. Now, if you put surname, into the Latin dictionary, surname means the thing that creepeth up from below. <laughs> so what's happened is man has been given dominion over the surname, which is the person, which is the human, which is the fiction, which is the dead corporation. But if you hold any sort of um, document from the government, such as a driver license, a bank card, or a bank account, or, or even or even hold um, the legal title to your home, if you hold any one of those things, you're dead. You're in the tree of knowledge. You're a debtor. You hold the legal title to it and you have lost your equity because in trust law he who holds legal title cannot touch the equity without license and this goes right back to the garden of eden because when when adam ate from the fruit of the tree of the, of knowledge which is the tree of the debtor when he applied for the credit card the minute he did that he was thrown out of the first garden and the only way he could get back into the Garden of Eden is, um, was under license. Now remember that, that, um, that maxim. He who holds legal title cannot hold the equity without license. And the license to hold the equity is granted from Babylon, which is the Vatican, which is the bank. So when you sit down here, when you're dead, then you need a license to do anything at all. And that's what's happening to you. You want to go fish, you want to do anything, you want to drive a car, you want to, because anything you do in Eden, well, while you're the debtor, uh, you must have a license. Now remember what Christ said over here. He said, in my name you shall be saved. So what happens is this name here, John Paul, is the creditors. The creditor. And because Christ said, in my name you shall be saved, means that you still are living. You are not dead. You are not a fiction. You are not human. You are not a person. You are not a corporation. You are a Christian. There it is there. You are not a pagan. You are simply a true Christian. The Christians that go into the church uh, that you see on every Sunday, they are not Christians. They are pagans. They believe that they're Christian. And that's what this thing is doing. He's the usurper. He's the trickster. He's Satan is always the, the, the Lucifer, the, the illusionist, where he uh, presents himself as God. Because persons, the only God of a person, which is the only God of a debtor, is Babylon, which is the Vatican. The Vatican created the, these things here. The Vatican created the, um, the incorporation when two names or two things are, uh, are joined together. That's it. But when you're Christ, you only have one name. You don't hold any, um, any legal title, any, anything. When you learn how to, how to um, operate this account, this Christian account over here, um, you will start to... Uh, realize that um, you, you can have anything you want 
ask and you shall receive. And, and that's how it really does work. Now, the account name, just to finish off, this is where the trick, the real trick, has been in here. The Christian account or the credit account is, come Paul, and the debtor account is the surname. The surname is not just the Smith, because Paul, John Paul, and the Smith belong to us. That's our name, and this is our um, heritage. So the both names belong to us. So the state can't make a claim over the family name or the heritage or the or the Christian or the given name. It cannot make a claim. But what it makes a claim over is incorporation. So as soon as these two names are assumed as one, that is the property of the Vatican. That is the state, the state of affairs of that governing system. This is the Christian account written in proper English and that is the debtor account the pagan account that is so if you hold this name here in proper English uh, you become the debtor so when you walk into a court and say I'm walking into this court I am a free I am a living, breathing man. Well, yes, you might very well be that. But the magistrate, who's the um, the administrator, which is Babylon, and the administration, well, it's here. That's what this thing is. Here's the I on the bill. The administrator, which is the magistrate, the man will walk in, I am the living breathing man your, your honor and he will say yeah well it's, that's fine do you hold a driver license uh, yes what's your name my name is John Paul Smith well the magistrate is obligated to uh, set up a, a salvage trust salvation for this because this person down here this man has been lost at sea he doesn't know who he is he doesn't know his own name and there's another maxim is if you know not the name of the thing, the thing itself is surely lost. So if you walk into the court say, I'm the man, but my name is John Paul Smith, and I hold a driver license. <laughs> the poor old magistrate, he says, oh, you know, what can I do about this? Okay, so he sets up a trust and then gives him a little bit of um, uh, justice that seemed to be done to make him feel a bit better but still wax him anyway and wax him as a debtor and then once he's got the debt he can't get he can't get out of it you've got to pay because debtors pay the, the bills and if you're one of these the full-on debtor that's agreed to be um john paul smith because you read john paul and the smith in sign language and you assumed it together that's not his problem. You assume that. You didn't do your, your homework. You didn't learn how to read the sign. You didn't learn your grammar. You learned nothing. You, you remained as a, a pleb, as a dumb idiot, as, as someone that's... You just remained dumb. So the, the magistrate, he's just got to administer you. The Vatican, he's got to administer, he's, he's got to administer all of you. So what he does is that he throws you on the Vatican ship at sea, in the Holy Sea. And you you lose all your rights then to land law. You you lose your your standing as man and as Adam. And only because God said, whatever you do, do not eat from the tr the tree or the f do do not eat the fruit. Be a usufruct of the debtor account. Don't do that. Otherwise, you will surely die. There's you there. <laughs> that's that's how the system works. I know it's a um, it's got nothing to do with law. It's all got to do with God and Christ, because they're the ones that taught you. They're the ones that well, the Bible sits in the court for that reason. If anyone says that um, it's not spiritual, 
it's, it's, it, of course it's spiritual. Because when you walk into those law courts, or those courts, they're not courts, they're tribunals. They're chambers, and a chamber is a tomb. They're dead. That's why the magistrate's wearing that black robe. He's mourning the dead. And you're walking in there, and you are dead. And you probably go, oh. <laughs> Poor fellas. They're all dead. And very rarely does any one of these ones come into that court. Now, the other slighted advice. It's not really advice, but it's when you know where you stand and you are over here and you do hold the drive licenses and you hold the, um, the bank loans and you are a good little debtor and you're paying all the bills of the state, and, um, which is very admirable of you for being that. Um, and I think sometimes the state will thank you if you're a hard worker. You will get a good life inside the state. But when it comes into a, a charge, when you've um, been charged with any form of a a charge account and you are the debtor and you hold the driver license um, to prove that you're a debtor because the name of the driver license is written in the all uppercase um, language which is called the ledger language or the dead ledgers that, that are on tombstones or it's also called an engraved image which is another thing that God said do not worship worship the engraved images which are the engraved images that sit on top of the tombstones which is the ledgers, and that's the, the stuff that comes in the mail. But in a court, if you are a debtor, and you know that you're a debtor, then no matter if you're guilty, or no matter if you're not guilty, if you've been charged, then my absolute advice to you is to plead guilty. Still state the case, but make the guilty plea. Because in the United States, um, Libor Code, the enemy of the United States, which is the enemy of Babylon, the enemy of the administrator, is the belligerent officer. And the belligerent officer is the one that pleads not guilty. Because if you walk into a, into a court, you're walking into the court saying, well, yes, I am the debtor and I'm not going to pay your debt. That's what you're saying. The other thing, what it does in, in a legal sense, the magistrates love it when you plead not guilty because the minute you plead not guilty, you violate the military codes, which is the, the law of the sea, the, the holy sea, and you put yourself into a state of conflict. And once you're in a state of conflict in military law, uh, the administrator has right to administer the conflict. So you're handing over all of the power over you to the state because you have become the enemy of the state. not guilty you can only plead guilty and say sorry because when you have operated when you've walked into this and you've chosen to be the debtor of the state you have no rights and don't even try and don't try and get them especially the idiot people that walk in and say I am the living man so you got a drive license oh yeah lost completely dumb stupid the other thing is do you need to come back to living man one of the biggest things is that the difference between coming back to being a living man you don't have to be a, a living man you don't have to come back to walking into that trust because this is outside the system um, once you simply hold the creditor account Christ becomes your your trustee. Christ is your trustee, and uh, that that's all evident on the second certificate of birth, because on the second certificate of birth, it states in black and white that the full name John Paul Smith is in the custody of the Registrar General of the certificate of birth 
which is the state. So it's st stated on that and signed. They've even told you that they um, own this, and the minute you hold that, then you become the trustee of the Registrar General. But if you don't hold this name and you simply hold this name here, then you become the director of the Registrar General. You don't have to come back to living man because Christ has given you a remedy within the world of the dead, which is the, the, the dead corporations, which is from, um, from Christ on down to 2017 uh, AD. Uh, from that time, we live in the world of the dead, in the chambers of the, of the water law. But inside that system, the Christian trust is the remedy within the world of the dead. Uh, the minute you walk into a um, church, above every church you will see that sign. And that sign means... That's why it's found on top of tombstones as well. It means dead. So when you walk into a church, you know that uh, that is the house of the dead. If you are this over here, a true Christian, then you don't walk into those places because that is for the quasi-Christian, the, the, the people that that think they're Christians, but um, but they're not. Now, even other churches, you'll you'll see that if they ever use this type of uh, writing, the um, the all uppercase text. Um, then if they're using any form of symbolic text on the signs or any form of sign language, it's another dead giveaway. Uh, that uh, In this all uppercase text, they're telling you that that is sign, that is sin, that is the house of the dead, the cross. So even though people walk and go, oh, I'm going to church and I'm doing whatever it is, all you've got to do is just um, read the signs Go into the, the dictionaries, the, black, the, the legal dictionaries and the, um, the Webster's Dictionary. Start having a look at these signs. And it's t it tells you in black and white everything. But the whole thing of the, the, the world of the dead that belongs to the administrator, which is Babylon, which is the Vatican. Um, if you're down here, then you are subject to that. If you're over here, then you are still got the ability of living man yet you hold the account that directs the Vatican that's why the Vatican probably doesn't really like real Christians it creates its own quasi Christians in all of its church because it knows it keeps them or keeps the masses under control but when you work it out <laughs> uh, usually um, criminals don't work this out uh, the people that do work it out are usually the people that um, that do love God and um, hold this God here as the true God, as they should. And when you do that, then you are subject to the laws of the Bible, like the, the, the statutes that make up the Ten Commandments, and also Christ, which is, if you love your, um, your neighbour in a spirit of brotherhood, then no war would ever happen. But uh, people that are with this God know automatically know that uh, they are subject to the to the real laws of the Bible and um, and they wouldn't do anything against their own brother or their own neighbor that uh, they couldn't that they wouldn't like to happen to them so the people that do work it out and that don't need to be controlled by the state don't need to be controlled by the state because they are the true solemn people that uh, have worked this out. So I hope that um, explains the hierarchy and the principle of how our governing system works today in this modern day society. <laughs> it's ancient and it's never going to change. <laughs> it dates back thousands and thousands of years. <laughs>